Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now we've covered the AMD AM4 socket extensively on this channel and I've probably tested most of the available APUs on the socket too. You're probably thinking, oh no, not another integrated graphics test, but the Ryzen 5 4650G that we're looking at today offers so much more. With 6 cores, 12 threads and onboard Radeon graphics, the 4650G is a great example of a chip that could potentially tide you over until that discrete graphics card you want comes back into stock and even then you could continue to use it to run all of your favourite modern games. As an OEM CPU it's mainly found in pre-built but I have seen systems from around £350 here in the UK which seems like a very good price. First of all then let's try some integrated graphics gaming tests before talking about the performance in comparison to other options. I plan to eventually test the Ryzen 7 8 core APU as well at some point. Once again, for lack of a better option, gameplay was recorded through MSI Afterburner, which will make the CPU usage appear a little higher than it would otherwise be, and all the figures were recorded before the benchmarking or recording, sorry, actually began. So for the initial gameplay tests, I'll throw up some comparisons between this, the 4350G we tested a couple of months ago, and the 3400G, which is sort of like the long-term proven favourite among APU buyers. Last time we discovered that the 4350G and 3400G performed quite closely, with the 4350G actually slipping ever so slightly behind in a few comparisons. While the integrated graphics of the 4650G are still the limiting factor, holding back the CPU in gaming scenarios, there is still an increase in performance over the 3400 and 4350G. Sometimes this difference is almost non-existent and sometimes it's a bit more noticeable, at least with an FPS counter. Still, it's nice to know that there is an increase in frame rate, but the real damper is the availability of the 4650G outside of OEM channels. As I said before, they are appearing in pre built more often these days, which is good, but that does limit you somewhat in terms of personal customization. That's not to say you couldn't make changes afterwards, but the best way to go if you're going to be relying solely on the iGPU is the 3400G. Now, you can also go down the AliExpress route if you don't mind waiting, and I've seen 4650Gs on there for about £150 or the equivalent in your chosen currency. For the next set of benchmarks, Benchmarks then, I'm going to pair the 4650G with a discrete GPU and compare it to the ever popular Ryzen 5 3600. So the 4650G and 3600 aren't too different performance wise, both have 6 cores, 12 threads and decent processing power. Where the 3600 takes the crown is its availability and affordability, and while that might not be the case everywhere right now, the 3600 is still easier and cheaper to find as a standalone option. How then does this on paper difference translate to games? Now I've gone with a mid-range 1660 Super for the testing, partly because this is a more realistic representation of what's actually available right now, albeit at a higher cost, and partly because my 3070 is on loan to a friend. Well, mainly because of that. <laughs> Even so, and despite less GPU power to really show off the full potential of both, a difference is visible across a few games that I tested in favour of the 3600. I saw about 8 frames difference in terms of the average gap between uh, the 34 600 and the 4650G, sorry I'm getting a bit confused with all these numbers now, and uh, yeah the extra power of the 3600 certainly is more apparent here because of the CPU intensive nature of Battlefield 5. Now of course different levels of the game will produce different outcomes and multiplayer will certainly make a difference as well. I then tested Black Ops Cold War with bots on Nuketown. There was a similar difference here, but again the scenarios are very playable and that 1% low stayed above 60 FPS here with both chips. The 4650G reminds me of that cheap 3600X I bought on eBay a while back that only worked when it was underclocked. Using the 4650G is a bit like using a slightly underclocked 3600 in terms of performance, but again, if you were to pair it with faster memory than you did with a 3600, then that would overtake and vice versa once again. 
Now Cyberpunk 2077 is more of a GPU hog with this setup, so here the frame rates and frame times were even closer. This represents what you'll see most of the time to be honest if you aren't using a high-end GPU. Now there are actually more instances where I think you'll see pretty close performance between these two as opposed to both of these demonstrating huge differences, not just in terms of averages but percentile figures as well. To conclude then, if you are planning on relying on integrated graphics for a while, then a 4650G pre-built might be a good choice. You wouldn't be that much worse off though with a 3400G, only in terms of CPU power, but when it comes to the iGPU gaming performance it's going to be negligible. As for the whole CPU aspect, and a 3600 makes more sense to be fair, if you don't care about an onboard GPU. But there we go, if you come across a 4650G pre-built for a good price and don't know if it's worth it or not, you certainly won't be disappointed with the performance from either the CPU or onboard GPU. With all that said then, well I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of this chip in the comments. Let me know if you've got one and how it performs for you. Of course, I will keep an eye out for the 8-core Ryzen 7. APU I've seen in a few systems as well here in the UK of course they are a little more expensive so I'll try and keep my eyes out for a bargain thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one